Okay, the following lesson is for fifth grade. Uh, this is chapter two, lesson one, uh, two over plant life cycles. And in this lesson, we'll discuss the following vocabulary that you see to the right of the screen. The words are pollination, pollen, embryo, seed coat, germination, monocot, dicot, and conifer. Um, we'll discuss moths life cycles, fern life cycles, we'll discuss parts of a flower, flower life cycles, angiosperm life cycles, um, seeds, and conifer life cycles. Um, so let's just go ahead and jump into our seedless plant life cycles which include our mosses and ferns. So all living things have a life cycle. A life cycle is a series of differing stages of development. You've probably heard about it before when you think about a frog's life cycle or butterfly life cycle. Um, plants go through them too. Plant life cycles include both sexual and asexual stages. And that going back and forth or alternating between the two stages or two types of reproduction, that's called alternation of generations. Again, the process of alternating between asexual and sexual reproductions is called alternation of generations. Let's talk about the moss life cycle. Well, the moss life cycle begins with asexual reproduction. Uh, the moss plant is going to grow a thin brown stalk, as you can see here, and out of that, those. Uh, capsules at the top contain spores. A spore, um, spores are cells that can develop into new plants without fertilization. So this can become a plant without ever having to be fertilized. So that explains the asexual reproduction part. When the capsule opens, the spores again, they're released. They are carried by the wind to somewhere else and they land in a shady moist soil and that's where they're most likely to grow and that's where we get this new moss plant. Then we enter the sexual reproduction stage. That spore is going to develop into a green carpet-like plant, which you can see here. Okay, The adult plant has male structures that produce uh, the sperm cells and the female structures produce the eggs. Okay. Sperm or male cells are going to get carried to the egg um, where fertilization is going to take place. The fertilized egg is going to grow on that female structure and it develops into a new brown stock that contains the spore capsule and then we do this all over again. That's the moss life cycle. Let's talk about the fern life cycle over here. Like mosses, ferns are going to begin their life with asexual reproduction. Um, they're going to have these fronds right here and on the back side of the fronds or leaves you're going to find the spores. The spores, um, they're usually in these clusters I guess you could say, and when they open up the spores are released. The fern spores find the right conditions to grow into a, a smaller heart-shaped plant. Well, that's where they have male and female structures, as you can see here, the male and the female. This is now into our sexual reproduction stage. The heart-shaped plant produces those cells. If the male sex cell here uh, fertilizes the female cell, the fertilized egg is going to form a new plant. The new plant gets those leafy ferns again, and they have the spore cases on the fronds, and again, the cycle continues. Okay, so those are the life cycles of seedless plants, which include mosses and ferns. Let's now discuss parts of flowers. There are over 300,000 identified plants on Earth. About 250,000 of them are angiosperms. Now, if you remember, angiosperms are your flowering plants. They get flowers. Our other plants that don't receive flowers, those are our gymnosperms. A good way to remember that again is Angie gets flowers and Jim doesn't. If you're going on a date, usually you would take your flowers to Angie instead of Jim. Okay, Flowering plants are efficient food makers. They're tough. 
Uh, they grow fast. They're really good at producing offspring. Um, they, they're the only group that produces flowers, seeds, and fruits. Flowers, again, if you remember from a previous discussion, flowers are the reproductive organs of your angiosperm. They produce both sperm and egg cells. Okay, But remember, not all flowers are alike. We're going to discuss the different types of flowers, as you see here. Let's start with a complete flower, this one. A complete flower has all four parts. It has the petals, it has sepals, it has the stamen, and the pistil. Okay, and we're remembering all the parts of the petals, as you see here, the pink parts. Those are brightly colored. That's going to attract your pollinators to come on in. The sepals down here, um, they're green. They're found below the petals. They're protecting it. Um, the flower parts when it's just a bud before it blooms. The stamen, it's the male part of the flower. We remember that it's the male part because the last three letters spell men. So remember, male part, stamen. And then that leaves us the female part, which is the pistil, which you see is this part right here. Flowers um, usually have more than one stamen. You can see they've one, two, three, four. They got multiple stamens here. At the top of the stamen is the anther, and that's where you're going to find the pollen, and that's the sperm cells. Pollen contains sperm cells, which are going to be carried from here to here. The pistil is made up of the stigma, which is the top part, and the style, which is the middle part, and the ovary, which is in the bottoms. But all of it together is the pistil. Okay. The ovary houses these eggs, the female cells, and this is where fertilization takes place through the process of pollination as the pollinators come in to get nectar and they get the pollen on their body parts or wings or something and then they're going to fly over to the next flower and, and then that pollen is going to be moved from here to the stigma moving down the style to the ovary and fertilization takes place. So that was a complete flower again having all four parts petals, sepals, stamen, pistils. An incomplete flower is missing one or more of those flower parts. A perfect flower um, has both stamens and pistils. Typical perfect flowers, they include your lilies, your tulips, fruit blossoms. Uh, a flower can be incomplete and perfect. Okay, so For example, um, think of a wind flower. It does not have petals, but it has male and female structures and sepals. Imperfect flowers lack either the stamen or the pistil, so they're one or the other. So that tells us, essentially, that these flowers are either male or female. They're not both, as it was with the case with your complete flower, where it had both parts, and you couldn't say it's male or female. These imperfect flowers are either male or female. Um, other plants produce separate male and female flowers on the same plant. For example, a single corn plant will have both male and female flowers. So again, remember that flowers are important in the angiosperm life cycle because they are the reproductive parts. Without them, the, there wouldn't be other plants. Let's move on to talk about a little bit more about the angiosperm life cycle. Now we discussed this a little bit in the previous slide. Uh, the angiosperm life cycle has a lot to do with pollination. Um, pollination is the transfer of pollen from the stamen to the pistil. Pollen is that yellow powder at the top of uh, the anther that contains the male sperm cells. Okay, You get the help. Flowers get help from pollinators, which are your bees, your birds, your bats. Uh, they can be wind and water as well, depending on the flower. Um, what, well, why are the bees, birds, bats going for these flowers? They want something. They want nectar. Nectar is a sweet liquid produced by the flower to attract those pollinators. That's what they want, and it becomes a win-win situation. The, the pollinators get the nectar to make whatever they're making, maybe honey. And then the flowers 
get help being pollinated and helping with fertilization and, and getting new flowers. So they attract them in with the bright petals. Pollinators come in to get nectar. While they're there, the wings are going to rub onto the anther. And it's sticky, pollen is, so it's going to stick to them. And then pollinators are going to want more than one flower, so they're going to fly from one flower to the next flower. While they're there, that pollen that was stuck on their wings is going to get stuck to the stigma. Okay? From there, it travels down the style to the ovary where the eggs are, and fertilization takes place. Okay? So pollination has to happen before fertilization, which is, again, the joining of the male and female cells. Okay? That's where seeds are made, and you make new plants. Those bloom. They may have flowers, and then the life cycle again continues. So, again, remember, animals aren't the only means of uh, pollination. Wind can do it. Wind pollinated plants or grasses, other trees, those that, that don't have bright colors and don't smell good, pollinators such as bees, birds, bats aren't going to go to them because they don't get anything from them, so wind and water will help there. Okay. Self-pollination occurs when a perfect flower from both male and female parts uh, pollinates itself. So a bee can, in the same flower, get take the, the flower's own pollen and move it to its own pistil. Okay. Cross-pollination occurs when the pollen from one plant pollinates on a different. So what's happening here, from this flower to this flower, this is cross-pollination. If the bee is on one flower and it pollinates that same flower, that's self-pollination. Okay? So that, again, was the angiosperm life cycle. Let's talk a little bit what happens after um, fertilization takes place and they make seeds. Inside that ovary of the flower, again, that's where the sperm and egg cells join, and the embryo. The embryo is the beginning of a new offspring for a plant uh, that's packaged inside the seed. Um, as the seed develops, the ovary enlarges until it becomes a fruit, and the fruit protects the seeds inside it. The seeds have three main parts, the embryo, the cotyledon, and the seed coat, which in some cases is called the seed membrane. Okay. Um, seeds can't go through photosynthesis and grow on their own, so they get the help from their food supply and the cotyledon. The seed coat protects them with that hard covering of the shell. Uh, seeds form, and they must be dispersed to spread to a favorable location to germinate. Germination is the development of a seed into a new plant. So what you're seeing here is it's growing into a new plant. That's germination. Um, seeds can be dispersed in many ways. They can float through the air. They can float in the water. Um, they can be hitchhikers and be sticky and stick to, say, your socks or cloth or animals and move from one place to another. Some are inside fruits. Animals like fruits. They're going to eat fruits, and then when they go to the restroom and dispose of those seeds, they're planted with fer nice fresh fertilizer, and you're going to grow some more uh, plants. So that's how seeds are dispersed. Uh, flowering plants are usually divided into two groups, your monocots and dicots. A monocot produces a single cotyledon. Mono, the prefix, means one, so one cotyledon. Um, typical monocots are corn, plants, orchids, and grasses. A dicot produces seeds with two cotyledons. The prefix di means two, so you have two food supplies. Um, those can include your bean plants, your roses, okay? And those are what's in seeds. Let's finish up by talking about conifer life cycles. Well, earlier we discussed that uh, Angie gets flowers, angiosperms have flowers. Conifers are gymnosperms, and that means they don't produce flowers. Uh, these are your evergreens, your pines, firs, other cone-bearing plants. So if you see cones, it's a conifer. Cone, conifer, get it? They're gymnosperms. Um, they're different from the angiosperms in two ways. Again, they don't have flowers. And second, they have naked seeds, you could say. Their seeds are not packaged inside fruit, just like they were in the angiosperms, and so they're not eaten by animals. A single conifer tree will produce both male and female cones, and the smaller male cone will release clouds of powdery pollen into the, that's blown in the wind. The larger female cone is going to produce a sticky liquid. 
pollination occurs with these gymnosperms, when the pollen lands on the sticky fluid, grab a pine cone sometime. It's really sticky. You'll see what I'm talking about. After fertilization occurs, the developing egg remains attached to that female cone and then it matures into a seed. So how are they dispersed? We know wind, water, uh, hitchhikers, animals eating stuff helped angiosperms be dispersed. Well, what about conifers? Uh, they whirl around in the wind. Um, they get stuck to the ground. They get up far from where they are. And under these right conditions, these seeds grow into new trees. So this is everything we needed to know about plant life cycles. Again, we discussed uh, seedless plant life cycles. We discussed angiosperm life cycles, parts of flowers, seeds, and conifer life cycles, including monocots, dicots, angiosperms, and gymnosperms. If you have any questions about Chapter 2, Lesson 2, Plant Life Cycles, please let me know, and feel free to message me on Edmodo, or contact me in any way, students that you know how to. Edmodo is your best option. Um,